This is CBC Here and Now. Good evening and welcome to Here and Now. You've been watching some special live national coverage of the federal budget. We'll have some local reaction to some of the announcements, but we begin with provincial politics. The Liberals are reeling today after taking a beating in the by-election for Fogo Island Cape Friels. It's been a Liberal district for the last nine years until MHA Derek Bragg passed away in January. But last night, PC candidate Jim McKenna took over with 58% of the vote. Liberal candidate Dana Blackmore received only 39%. McKenna says it's a sign that people want the Liberals out. Every year, the fisher people of this province are facing the same obstacles every year, and, and it seems like year after year is getting worse. And I think we have to put that to bid, and we have to start over fresh and, and, and get this province back on track again, because that is, that is the backbone of our province. Well, that decisive win by the PCs is raising questions about how big issues like the fishery and waning support for the federal liberals are affecting the Fury government's popularity in this province. Here now is Mark Quinn reports. Uh, not the not the result that we wanted, uh, but we heard the message uh, from the uh, wonderful people of that district. The premier said by-elections are often difficult for incumbent governments, but he said this one in Cape Friel's Fogo Island was influenced by the recent crab fishery dispute. It is largely a, a fishing district, uh, and we all know that there was uh, significant anxiety and stress with respect uh, to the start of the crab season. Fury was also asked if the provincial Liberals are being harmed by the federal Liberals' waning popularity. He responded with comments about the recent tension between himself and Justin Trudeau. You know, on the carbon tax in particular, um, uh, the Prime Minister has tried to bait me at times with, uh, with uh, certain ad hominems and name-calling almost. But look, we have a very different opinion on the carbon tax. It's not right for the people of the province. I wish the Prime Minister would understand that. He's being very sclerotic in his approach on this ideologic marriage that he has to this principle. Meanwhile, the provincial progressive conservative leader was beaming as he was asked to comment on McKenna's win. Huge win, uh, huge vote of confidence for the positions that the uh, PC party of Newfoundland and Labrador have taken on behalf of the people. Uh, a real vote of confidence for the new MHA, Jim McKenna, and the work that he did in the district. And of course, the people of Fogo Island Cape Friels, who came out in huge numbers to tell this government that everything is not okay. The NDP believes the by-election indicates that people are losing faith in the Liberal government. What people are uh, disappointed with or are frustrated, maybe even angry about, is the lack of, what, uh, of any meaningful action. A lot of reports, a lot of committees, but in the end, um, an awful lot. When, when, when you do the A-tips and dig a bit deeper, you find that there's precious little in the way of meaningful action taken. Accountability. All the parties will soon have another kick at the can. A by-election must still be held for the district of Bayvert Green Bay. Fury said he'll have more to say about that later this week. Mark Quinn, CBC News, St. John's. Well, the 2024 federal budget has officially been delivered, and there aren't many surprises. The government has spent the last two weeks announcing $38 billion in new financial commitments. The big question has been, where is that money coming from? We're driving the kind of economic growth that will ensure every generation of Canadians can reach their full potential. And we're making Canada's tax system more fair by ensuring that the very wealthiest pay their fair share. Now, in the weeks before the budget announcement, the Prime Minister and several Cabinet Ministers toured the country. They announced several spending programs aimed at getting more housing built and making it more affordable for first-time buyers. They also unveiled spending on national pharmacare and school meal programs, defence and AI. Housing, however, remains one of the most pressing issues on the federal government's plate, so it's not surprising that it was the main focus of today's budget. It does include a big-ticket commitment for millennials and Gen Z voters, $8.5 billion in new spending for housing, and that includes a housing accelerator fund for municipalities and for new water and sewer infrastructure and some growing communities. 
Ottawa has also offered tens of billions in loans to spur new rental construction. There's also a $6 billion Canada Disability Benefit and a $1 billion National School Food Program. It means Ottawa will post a $40 billion deficit this year and they'll spend about $53 billion more than planned over the next five years. Now, to help pay for that, they're hiking taxes on the rich and corporations. Here in Newfoundland and Labrador, stakeholder groups are watching closely. Among them are the Public Service Alliance of Canada and the Newfoundland and Labrador Federation of Labour. Certainly a massive investment in housing and, and it's a, a good thing, much needed investment. I think the provisions around um, rights um, and supports for renters is very important. We have such a growing number of renters, um, you know, including a millennial generation who, um, you know, unlike their parents are, are, you know, further and further away from purchasing a home. Um, so those provisions for renters are really important. An elderly man in St. John says he got his money back after a CBC Investigates story we first brought you last month. 92-year-old Lloyd Walker says he was charged over $1,000 for commemorative coins he didn't want. Now, after we told you his story, the company refunded the money. Ariana Kellant has the latest. The coins have stopped coming, but the flyers haven't, at least not yet. I would have probably about more if this hadn't happened, but I will not deal with the Bradford Exchange again. Lloyd Walker placed an order last July with the Bradford Exchange, an American company with an office in this country. It's been selling collectibles, trinkets and jewelry since the 1970s. Walker thought he was ordering a single coin, but instead he says he was unwittingly enrolled in a monthly program that saw more than $1,000 charged to his credit card. He wrote the company months later, but both payments and coins kept coming. Walker says after the story aired, two representatives from the company called. And he said, well, um, what was wrong with the, the coins? I said there was nothing wrong with the coins. I said it was the sleeving way you went about tricking me into more coins. The Bradford Exchange has stressed that its subscription and return policies are clear. A company spokesperson confirmed the money was returned as per its 100% refund policy and said they eventually found Walker's letter three months later. She said, look, we're going to reimburse you for all the funds, even the one you bought in the beginning, she said. You can keep them all. But the offer was moot. Walker had already shipped all the coins back. The Better Business Bureau says in general, complaints over automatic subscriptions or programs are common. Well, often enough for us to, you know, create uh, publications and tips, um, you know, just... Um, I guess creating awareness for what consumers should be looking for when they're engaging with a su subscription service. Back in St. John's, Walker has his money back and an apology, but he's not satisfied. He says it shouldn't have happened to begin with. Ariana Kelland, CBC News, St. John's. Well, now to some news from the courts where there was an unusual twist at the trial for Robert Regular. The defense called an expert witness and revealed that the 72-year-old has a medical condition that could affect his ability to have sex. And that may throw into doubt two of the four allegations against him in his sexual assault trial. Dr. Douglas Drover, a urologist and former chief of staff at Eastern Health, wasn't Regular's doctor, but was asked by the defense to review Regular's medical file. Now today, Drover testified that Regular has erectile dis dysfunction, and the court was told Regular went to his doctor in 2011 with concerns over inter intermittent erectile dysfunction. Regular is alleged to have had sex with a female client in 2012 and 2013 in his law office. Drover says one in two men over the age of 60 has the condition, but he could not confirm the level of severity of Regular condition. The trial continues tomorrow. Two brothers fight and one dies. As Johanna Semiak faces his community, a new opportunity emerges for hope and change. I got a purpose in life to be with my family, be with my kids. 
It made me realize I got a problem. I should fix it while I'm young. And it made me go deep in my mind, I guess, to think about what really happened to me. I'm Heidi Adder in Hopedale, and we'll bring you that story tomorrow night. Well, students at Memorial University's Grenfell campus in Corner Brook are not happy with a recent internet rebate administration offered following a cyber attack late December. Some students who live on campus were offered $25. Now, the school has shut down Wi-Fi, Grenfell email accounts, and printing services as part of a security measure while the ransomware attack was being investigated. The students' union asked administration for a full $50 student services refund for all students students, plus a break in tuition fees, saying the semester was greatly disrupted by both the cyber attack and service changes. The students pay a lot for them to not get back what they were promised. And instead of, uh, instead of increasing the salaries of the administration or administrative uh, offices, I think it can be better put into students' uh, pockets and students' uh, accounts, I guess. Only one in four technology jobs in Canada is held by women, even fewer by black and indigenous people. But a new federally subsidized program called Code to Career is looking to change that. And the launch of its Atlantic Canada boot camp took place in St. John's earlier today. So Code to Career is a partnership between Canada Learning Code and BrainStation, funded by Upskill Canada, powered by Palette, and it is a subsidized boot camp program, so 12-week program for groups and learners that are underrepresented in the tech ecosystem. So they'll join, attend this program, and learn to be a software engineer. What we're teaching is basically how you create technology, the websites that we use every single day, the applications we use every single day. We are teaching the languages that are used to write and build those applications. One thing has been made clear to me by various people in this industry is that we need more bodies, we need more people, and everybody's coming together. So to have this opportunity here, especially with underrepresented groups, is a great thing. My prediction is that we will see more of this because, again, I think there's a spot here for absolutely everybody. We know that in Canada specifically, only one in four of all technology roles are held by women, even fewer if we think about the intersecting identities of folks, black, indigenous, newcomers. Um, and so we really believe that the tech that we use every single day should be built by people who use it. Um, and so this program is really specifically prioritizing underrepresented folks and making sure that it's a place that they feel welcome, calling them in. And we think that we need to do that extra work to create those opportunities and that space, subsidize a program for folks that are underrepresented. So we are building the technology of the future here or anywhere in Canada that works for everybody. The program is a $16,500 program if you were to pay. We are subsidizing it for $250. That is the cost to kind of register and enroll. Um, and if that becomes a barrier, we, have a, we can have a conversation about that as well. The aim here is to make this as accessible as possible to people who would not otherwise see themselves or have the means to enter the program. We believe that's what the future requires. And so we're really excited to be able to offer that with uh, Upskill Canada funding. Well, now to some sports news. A blind hockey player from CBS is celebrating an international gold medal win along with the rest of Team Canada. Brandon Joy is part of the Canadian national blind hockey team. They play an annual three-game series against the U.S. And this year, Canada went undefeated in the series in St. Louis, Missouri. It's their fifth consecutive win. And in the weather, we've got rain starting to work its way across the island with some light rain showers for some places. We'll talk about amounts and the dreaded S word for Thursday.
can expect to find crystal clear audio, expansive display space, endless entertainment, and more comfort for everyone. But even with all that, we still left room for all the unpredictability, spontaneity, and unexpected things you'll find out here. Jeep Grand Cherokee, the most awarded SUV ever. New McCafe Cold Brew has officially dropped. And it's... Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, that's new. Did you ask your doctor about Rebelsis? Actually, I'm seeing my doctor later today. Did you say Rebelsis? I take Rebelsis. Okay, order up for Rebelsis. I mean, Rachel. Rebelsis. Ask your doctor if Rebelsis is right for you. Loving the uncommon is the wonderful thing we have in common. Electronics keep us connected to our world. Recycling ensures the resources inside devices are recovered and reused. More than ever, it's what's inside that counts. The future is in your hands. Don't let it go to waste. To find out more, visit RecycleMyElectronics.ca. With the Bel Air Direct app, you can quickly submit and track a claim. Like when a canoe crashes through your car windshield. It's that simple. The electricity is all around us, sometimes where you least expect. Pay careful attention, especially after a storm. If you see a line down, stay away and call us for help. You invest time into your home and so do we. At Atlantic Home Warranty, our builders undertake additional exclusive training to ensure your home is built to a higher standard. Ask us about our extended warranties and protect your investment today. When I first came in Newfoundland, I was in shock on other part of planet and it was cold. But then it was feeling like my dreams come true. Newfoundland is my choice. Everything here is what I was looking for. For every home, for every room, Cohen's has exactly the look you want, in stock and ready. New styles, new arrivals. See more of what's in store at Cohen's in our new bi-weekly flyers. Cohen's, where the home is. Let's maximize those dreams. That's right, the next Lotto Max jackpot is an estimated $70 million plus an estimated 10 max millions. A backyard putting dream. What about a whole backyard course? She's driven to the max. Get your Lotto Max tickets today. This weather update is brought to you by the Healthcare Foundation Home Lottery. The early bird prize deadline is midnight Friday, May 10th. Order tickets now at hcfhomelottery.ca. Good evening, Heather here with your weather. Taking a look at some of these gorgeous highs we had again today. 14 for Deer, uh, Badger and for Marystown, 12 for Bonavista and 11 in Cornerbrook, but into the single digits elsewhere and below freezing for Labrador West and Northern Labrador. Broke a temperature record yesterday in Mary's Harbor by a tenth of a degree, one set in 89. Weather on the way. Tonight we have rain, drizzle, fog, some freezing rain possible for Southern Labrador, maybe even the Northern Peninsula as well. Tomorrow, your rain drizzle fog. That will end. Cloudy skies for some. A mix of sun and cloud for others, but we're not going to be out of the woods because what's going to happen on Thursday, Heather, you ask? Do we have snow? How much will we get? Where will it be? Can't tell you right now. Speaking with Environment Canada earlier, they say there's a lot of uncertainty with this system. They do have a special weather statement out for these areas in gray from the Northeast Avalon to here, Green Bay, White Bay. And uh, you're just going to have to keep your eyes peeled and ears peeled and watch out about what's going to happen because it's a bit uncertain for right now. Taking a look at the future tracker, uh, we're going to have some clouds tonight. Chance of flurries for Lab West, some clouds for Central Labrador. 
But the weather story as we head towards midnight is this rain here for the east. We could get a good soaking for the Avalon Peninsula, 5 to 15, 5 to 10, excuse me, for the areas that are going to be in green in the overnight. And then Wednesday, some snow or some flurries for the Bayvert Peninsula, Green Bay, White Bay on the northeast coast there of the island as we go into Wednesday evening. We'll see a little bit more of that on into Thursday. Taking a look, though, at tonight, we can give you some certainty about tonight. The Avalon, temperatures between 4 and 6 degrees, 3 for the Buren and Bonavista peninsulas, where we could see 5 to 10 millimeters for those peninsulas. For uh, the Avalon, we're going to see more, especially on the southern Avalon, 15 to 25. On the northern Avalon, 10 to 15. Through central, we could see 5 to 10 as well at 5 degrees. But as we get through the uh, southwest coast of the island here at 3 degrees for Port of Basque, we could see a chance of drizzle, and we will have a little bit more drizzle for the west coast than you'll see on the southwest coast. Working our way up to the Straits in St. Anthony, flirting on either side of zero there, and into the freezer for the rest of Labrador. For Happy Valley Goose Bay, you're going to see more clouds tonight after that rain ends. Clouds on the coast, you could see a flurry in Nain and in Lab West as well. Taking a look at tomorrow now, uh, 10 degrees is our daytime high in St. John's. Cooler for the southern Avalon where we will see more <laughs> rain. For the Buren Peninsula, 11, you could see a pop of sun there. Same thing for the Bonavista Peninsula, but at 7 degrees. Cooling off a little bit through central there, you could see uh, a flurry for the Bay Vert Peninsula. It's looking like a bit of a mix there for Grand Falls in the Twilling Gate area, but warmer. Stay in as rain for uh, the Conagra Peninsula. Could see two millimeters for the west coast tomorrow. A little bit more sun there for Port of Basque, though. As we head up to the northern peninsula, temperatures around four. You could see a flurry or a raindrop for St. Anthony, uh, depending on how things go for you with the uncertainty with the weather and looking like two and a flurry possible for Cartwright. For the rest of Labrador, temperatures zero for Nain and Churchill Falls, minus one for Lab West, minus two for Macobic, and four. For Happy Valley Goose Bay, you could see a flurry or a shower there as well. We're going to take a look at Wednesday evening now into Thursday. Still uncertainty about what may come, but this is the S. This is the snow that we are talking about that could change over terrain. Still uncertainty uh, around what could happen, but you see the snow there. You see the pink. You see the green. Still uncertain what's going to happen there, but it looks like temperatures between zero and three in the east and two and four in the west. But Labrador, looks like you're going to have a wonderful day on Thursday. And that is our weather forecast. And we'll be back with a longer one in your long range, but we'll have that tomorrow night.
Returning now to one of our top stories, Ottawa's latest federal budget includes, among other things, a multi-billion dollar housing program paid for in part by capital gains tax hikes on the rich. Now, the move is an attempt to tackle an ongoing national housing crisis. Here in Newfoundland and Labrador, some stakeholder groups say it's a start. Certainly a massive investment in housing and, and it's a, a good thing, much needed investment. I think the provisions around um, rights um, and supports for renters is very important. We have such a growing number of renters, um, you know, including a millennial generation who, um, you know, unlike their parents, are, are you know, further and further away from purchasing a home. Um, so those provisions for renters are really important. Um, some of the uh, budget measures around um, the extension of amortization for for, uh, mortgages are, are interesting. Obviously, uh, some concerns about just extending the amount of time that you have to repay your mortgage, and you know, on the surface, that seems to um, first and foremost benefits ba benefit banks <laughs> um, who are holding those mortgages. So um, I'm not sure that that goes uh, necessarily far enough. Um, and, and of course, you know, we are ultimately looking for um, more new affordable housing builds, um, which I think will help people in this province. What we're hearing from our members is that they certainly support uh, the efforts the federal government is making in that territory, uh, but this budget hasn't been very um, good in terms of investing into public services. There's a lot of support services that the uh, federal public sector can give to those great efforts around housing, uh, and we'll continue to give those in all those uh, appropriate ministries. Uh, but for us so far, it's uh, not much detail on some cuts that we hear, and that concerns us deeply in the Public Service Alliance of Canada. Well, we're going to have lots more reaction to the federal budget in the coming days for sure. Now, this is a different show for us because of the federal budget, but we are going to end it in the same way we normally do. <laughs> right, Heather? That's right. <laughs> With a weather photo. Yes. This one is especially for Carolyn. Oh, <laughs> Love it. And it's a bumblebee on some crocuses, and it was uh, sent to us courtesy of Gary Hebbard, and it is just adorable. A sign of spring for yes. sure, even though we have S-N-O-W, <laughs> snow, <laughs> the in the forecast. I, I will say that's a honeybee and not a bumblebee. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> Carolyn knows her bees. <laughs> yes, my goodness, I was out in my own garden the other day, down on the ground with my phone, taking uh, some video, slow-mo video of my <laughs> honeybees on my crocuses. So, uh, that's sweet. Yeah, it is a, a lovely, lovely shot. Gary, thank you so much for that. Really appreciate that. Indeed. And if you have any photos like this that you want to share with us, we love to see them. Mm -hmm. Send them in. You can do so at nlphotos at cbc.ca. And I've got a bit of a theme of trying to squeeze in the animals <laughs> into the weather photos this I week while Ashley's loving away. <laughs> for sure. And, you know, it's a good reminder about planting crocuses and how important they are for honeybees this time of year. So, well, that's it for us. Thank you so much for joining us. Good night.